Hello again everyone, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from Richmond, Virginia to Washington, D.C. Flying a Beechcraft 350i King Air at a flight level of 3,500 feet. Let's go ahead and go inside. Set the flight level now. There's th that 3,500, 3,600, there we go, 3,500 feet. All right. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Whoa. Getting some kind of a crosswind or something. Alright, well, anyway, we've taken off. Landing gear up. Flaps up. KH 417, continue. For north departure, I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Richmond Tower KH-417 continue for north departure. I'm not sure if we were just getting a super strong side wind or if it's a problem with my controls. I had trouble with my foot rudder, foot rudder pedals. They seem to be okay, but I wasn't using those. I've been using the rotating on the stick, which has always worked very well. So I'm not, sh not sure what that was. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get us on course. And let's go ahead and engage autopilot. Yaw damper. Uh, if I can get it to enable, I need to assign that to a button. All right, and we want navigation and altitude control. One seven, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. Richmond Tower KH four one seven. Frequency change. Potomac Approach KH-417 is type Beechcraft King Air Tree miles north of Richmond, 2,100 feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Looks like the sun's going to be setting soon. Maybe during this flight. We'll see. Squawk 0004 KH-417. Alright, so I'm just waiting to get up to target altitude and then I will level off the throttle. Cleared through the Charlie airspace. Cleared through the Charlie airspace, KH-417. KH-417, contact Potomac approach on 126 decimal 75. 126 decimal 75. Okay, let's we've reached our target altitude. I'm going to Potomac pull back on the throttle. KH-417, See if the center detent is a good position. Just don't want to get up into the red zone on that speed ticker tape on the left. Seems like it's heading in that direction. I'm going to pull back on the throttle a bit. Um, maybe we've got a headwind or something. Okay, well that looks like it's a good uh, compromise there. Uh, at about, I don't know, 40% on the throttle stick. Let's go ahead and go outside. Really not familiar with this area at all. Seems very flat. I don't know if the sun will still be out and we'll be able to see the monuments in Washington, D.C. or not. I'll give it a try. I might do that as a separate tour flight. It could be a better option. Alright, well it's time to play with the drone, as I always do, so let's go grab that. I'll stay connected to the plane. That's a little bit more convenient. But we can speed off away from it. Let's see if we can look back and see it. It's kind of hard to tell. Right, anyway. 
let's see what all this stuff is here. Uh, oh wow, a bunch of vegetation showing up as I drop down here. A lot of detail. I can see the watt meter maxing out on my UPS. GPS, uh, the GPU is doing its job. Um, so not much to see, just a bunch of kind of random plots, I guess, uh, random agricultural plots, maybe uh, from long ago, they were built that way. This could be greenhouses, I suppose. They don't look like greenhouses from the AI's perspective, but that kind of looks like what they would be. Uh, round buildings are always interesting to me because I assume they're tanks, but then the AI will creatively make them into buildings. Um, I doubt anybody has buildings like that anywhere, but it's cute. Another one of those uh, round buildings, several of them actually. I'm sure that would have to be a tank. It could not be a round building with square triangular roofs and all that. Parking lot, looks like I'm seeing some Photogram, photogrammic, uh, what is it, photogrammetric data? Usually in 4K you don't see any of that. I guess it's just too low res. Um, but that parking lot sure looked like it. Alright, well there's not a whole lot to see here. Let me zoom ahead further ahead of the plane, see what is around. still can't tell where we are. Could be this dot or this dot. I suspect it's that dot. Uh, I could probably tell if I turned off maybe, let's see, turn off some lights. Yeah, that didn't really tell me anything. Alright, well anyway, continuing on forward with the drone, I see some interesting things over here, an interesting water, waterway of some kind. Not sure if that's a lake or just some kind of a settlement. It's probably a major freeway down here of some kind. Actually, kind of looks like two major roadways through here. All right, let's go back and check out the plane. Speed is good. Heading is good. Altitude is correct. Everything looks fine. all the textures to reload. Uh, looks like I see like an electrical power grid down here. It's interesting. Interesting that the AI knows about that.
All right, let's go back to the external view and back inside. Check the instruments, everything looks good. We have a ways to go before we get there. I recently purchased the Eurofighter Typhoon jet fighter. Um, amazing aircraft that goes over Mach 2. I found myself going Mach 2.2 at one point uh, without realizing it. The um, speed gauge said 1300 knots, which I thought was interesting. The plane has autopilot. It's got a lot of controls, a lot of things I don't know what they do, but it's a lot of fun to fly. Squawk 1200. Frequency change approved. Squawk 1200. Get the uh, Frequency change approved. overhead view. Bird's eye view. Potomac approach KH417 is type Beechcraft King Air 6 miles northwest of Kilo Alpha Papa. That's kind of an interesting view. Request flight following. See the uh, flaps continuously changing a little bit at a time. Squawk. Uh, not the flaps, the um, elevator trip. Squawk four six seven six KH four one seven. KH four one seven. Just hit B for uh, barometric pressure. We were off by quite a bit. I hadn't hit it earlier, uh, so autopilot is making up for the difference in altitude for us. Copy KH four one seven. Some of these autopilot functions, I don't know actually what they do. Um, force disconnection. Why would you want to do that? Maybe if you were having trouble turning or something? I don't know. Flight director, I think that's on. Oh, no, it's not on. Interesting. There it is. Usually when I turn autopilot on and engage navigation via this one, it'll turn on flight director. It didn't in this case. Maybe that's due to the Logitech uh, multi-panel. Uh, so altitude is sensible. Half bank. I don't know what half bank mode means. I'll have to look that up. I hardly ever use vertical airspeed control, although that could be interesting if you're trying to reach a position in three dimensions at a certain time, I guess. There's flight director again. So I guess you can make a course change here. See if I can get rid of the yoke. I think if I go back to the default view and click on it. There we go. So I have buttons on the multi panel and the switch panel for most of these things. And so let me try toggling some things that are safe to toggle, like de ice. Okay, something beeped, so let's see if... I wonder what the warning is. Probably that I need to have the icing on. Fuel low. Interesting. I wonder why the fuel is low. Usually that doesn't happen. Um, I didn't turn off the fuel pump. Toggle it just to be safe. There's toggling the ice again. Pedo ice, de-icing. I mean, uh, and then just a bunch of different lights. All the different lights, including the panel. Um, so that's the most muscle what's on the switch panel. There's a control for starting the engines. I'm not sure how to use that yet. 
It's interesting, the multi-panel that's mostly about autopilot has an auto-throttle button. I've never used auto-throttle. I've always managed the throttle myself with autopilot, so I'm not sure what that's actually like. Um, let me go ahead and clear this warning. Uh, that's interesting about the fuel level. It does look like it's super low, right? Um, I have it set to unlimited fuel, so it's not going to be a problem. Maybe it's because it's of the uh, temperature. Hmm. I wonder if there's another sort of de-icing I need. Yeah, it's inoperative, so it means it wouldn't be needed for fuel. I'm kind of baffled why the fuel is empty. Is the fuel pump on? That's the question. So, I mean, according to my switch panel, it, it is. I'm toggling it, I don't see anything changing for fuel pump. Alright, well, like I said, it won't be a problem because I've got um, unlimited fuel turned on, so we're not going to run out of fuel, which is surprising. Okay, so at this point, I am going to take over from autopilot. Begins slowing us down a bit. And at the same time, drop a little bit in altitude, but not too much. I want to stay above 2100 or so. I could set that as a new target. Maybe it'll beep. Uh, when I get there, then when I leave, that will help me uh, keep track of that. Now I hit altitude. I haven't turned on autopilot, so it's not going to actually do anything. Uh, but it might cause it to chime when we get there. I'm going to dethrottle some more. I want to try to get us down to under 150. Long before we reach the airport. Landing here. Huh? It's funny. If you hit uh, the throttle all the way down, it, it just instantly says landing air, even if that's not what you need at the time. All right. So we're descending. We're dropping in speed a little bit. So that seems good. So far, this all seems very stable. I don't know why I had trouble with the rudder when I was taking off earlier. I don't know if it was a crosswind or my equipment. I'll have to check that out. But we got up in the air really quickly, so it wasn't a problem. In fact, I don't know if I need flaps down to fly this airplane. Maybe that was the issue. I don't. Th I think I usually don't take off with the flaps down. Maybe I do. I don't know. I can't remember now that I think about it. I'll experiment with that later. Looks like the flight director is giving us the course to get to the altitude, which is nice. So it's sort of like semi-autopilot. Just follow that magenta arrow and we'll get there. Yep, in fact, we're leveling off now. Still going too fast. Uh, I, there's only so far down I can drop the throttle. I don't want to listen to it say that all the time. I don't want to put the landing gear down until we're ready to land. Okay, I 
can slow this down a little bit by nosing up a little. That will help. I would like to get down to that white line on the sp speed ticker tape and then put the flaps down. I'm getting just a tad off course. Okay, there's that chiming I was talking about. It told me that I was outside of my target altitude range. For the longest time I didn't know what that chime meant, and then I eventually figured it out by observation. Alright, so I'm going to put flaps down halfway. Push hard on the stick because it's going to suddenly give us a whole lot of up thrust all of a sudden. And we're gaining altitude, which I don't want to do. So let's nose down and get some of that speed back. The flying feels a little different after the update. It feels. Um, a little bit more active or something, um, more responsive, maybe a little bit twitchier than I'm used to. So I think I can nose up now and try to get back to my uh, around 2200, something like that. I want to get the speed down, that's the main thing. So we don't want to be descending anymore. I think maybe if I put the flaps down all the way, that will help. Landing here, landing here, landing here, landing here, landing here, landing here, landing here. All right, landing here. I'll abide by that. We did slow down quite a bit. I'm going to put the shuttle back up to halfway. And I'm going to need much more throttle actually. We've dropped a lot of speed and we're climbing a little bit too. I'm having to fight with the airplane to get down to the altitude I want here. Pushing hard on st on the stick. Those flaps are very effective. Okay, so there's the altitude we want, but we're still going too fast. I think we'll slow down. I'm going to pull back on the throttle now. We're at the halfway point. Don't know where the landing pattern is going to be, left or right or center. I guess we'll find out shortly. Don't want to slow down too much, just going to give it some more throttle. Okay, well that's an okay landing speed, or at least a landing pattern speed. So just waiting for the co-pilot to contact the tower. I've tried to force that by the using the tower menu, but I haven't found a way to do that. I mean, I guess unless I switch it to me handling all the radio traffic, probably, uh, then I'd be able to do it. Tower KH-417 is 1-1 one, one miles south with Charlie to land. KH-417 Dulles Tower. 
Supply strain in runway one right. Altimeter three zero decimal three two and three four one and two zero. Make straight in runway one right KH four one seven. Okay, we're getting a little bit too much altitude again. Oh, good. So it's just right here. That's helpful. Okay, we're gonna climb a little bit, so I'm gonna give it some more thrust. In fact, we're losing a lot of speed, so I need to nose down. Yeah, the flying characteristics feel different after the update. I would assume they're made more realistic. I'll just have to get used to it. Okay, the engine I've got maxed out. That's what that warning is about. Internal temperature warning or something. Alright, I'm going to go to the right side so I can get centered on the runway visually. Okay, we'll pull back the throttle to halfway. We're going to start descending pretty quickly. Looks like the sunset's going to happen during our landing, maybe right after. We'll try to see it if we can. I'm going to go a little bit higher on the throttle, maybe up to 60%. Notice we're slowing down a little bit much, a little bit too much. Um, I could also drop some altitude. That would help. to drop this altitude anyway, so I might as well get that out of the way. Alright, I'm going to pull up, put the throttle way down, and that should get us back down to speed. I don't know what that beeping is. I've heard it before occasionally, not all the time. So I'm not, not actually sure what that means. Everything looks okay though. When there's something serious, it'll flash that warning red light in your face up there. So it doesn't seem like it's too serious. Okay, just trying to adjust towards the center a little bit better. KH417 cleared to land runway one right. When 321 at 34. 34. Okay. So we'll see what the landing is going to be like. Trying to keep it all very nice and smooth on the way down. That should ensure a nice smooth landing. Everything being equal. Also gonna move more towards the center now. Recenter visually on the runway. Watching my speed. Speed looks good. Might have to throttle up towards the end. Maybe not. Okay, this is the stage where I start to have trouble keeping the plane nice and stable. I guess it's the you know, ground effects or whatever. But I'll do my best here. I'm going to pull a little bit back on the throttle. I feel like we're gaining too much speed. We are descending pretty quickly. Let 
me get centered again on the runway. Yeah, there's quite a bit of wind. You can feel it pushing the plane. But all in all, this feels pretty smooth, so maybe this will be okay. Alright, the throttle's all the way down. So now we'll just hover and I'll bring it up if I need to. Looks like I might need to. Just for a moment. And now I'm getting a little unstable. pull up and see if I can hover and get a little bit better centered on the runway. Throttle's all the way down, so we're basically set to drop. Just don't want to drop too harshly. Alright, so this should be the rear wheels. If I can get them down. Alright. And the front wheel. Alright, and flaps up. A little crazy on the ground, but, you know, what can you do? It was very windy. Let's see if the rudder pedals are working okay. Yeah, they seem to be. How about the brakes? Okay. Let's contact ground. Dulles Ground, KH-417, taxi to parking. KH-417, taxi to general aviation parking, via taxiway cross runway, one right kilo, four kilo Delta Juliet. Alright. United 1506. I think I see a taxi ribbon up ahead of us, so head for that. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway cross runway, one right kilo, four kilo Delta Juliet, KH-417. So this would be a little bit of a long ride. We might get stopped along the way for cross traffic. Roger, United 1506. Might be able to look out the window and check the sunset out while we're going by here. Okay, I didn't mean to throttle up. I think what happened was I turned on the 360 controller and it somehow thought I was engaging the throttle. Okay, all kinds of crazy stuff's happening with the controller. So, let's put the flaps back up. All I was trying to do was just look out the window, see if I could see the sunset. I think the sun already went down, or maybe that's it actually. Let's see if I look over a little bit. Okay, yeah, we're catching the very tail end of it. It's kind of a photogenic shot there. Alright, let's continue on our way here. it's uh, wind pushing us along. Um, I mean, I've got the throttle down, but we're just continuing, continuing to speed up, which is not what I want. Um, and I don't seem to be able to get the speed down. Let me look at the throttle control here. Alright, so which one of these is the throttle control? That one. Alright, 
well, I suppose that it definitely made the sound different. I'm not sure what that actually did. Oh, we're going in reverse. Okay. That makes sense. So let's fix that problem. Now, what is it warning us about? Oh, engine internal temperature. So, again, I... All I did was turn on the Xbox controller, and it suddenly wanted to take off, so I don't know what that was all about. I think I've got control over it now. I didn't realize the airplane had reverse thrust. That's interesting because it might be fun to try to use that when landing to slow down uh, air brakes, I guess. I need to read about that. Okay, well, we're going at a reasonable speed now. seem to be working well. The problem was I'm using a Thrustmaster T-Rudder set of pedals and there's this six foot long cord that connects to a little box with a USB plug on it. And the problem is that all the digital electronics that sense the positions are inside that little box and it's plugged in with a telephone jack style connector. So all I needed to do was just clean the connections and it seemed to make a difference, it seemed to correct everything. So I just have to do that occasionally, um, if I, especially if I notice a problem. But at the moment they seem like they're fine, they're responding like you've got the full full range. I was surprised that it was kind of primitive like that. You'd expect maybe the USB cord to be longer. Um, and, you know, not have the reading of the pedals be subject to RF interference hey, and resistance in the wire and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we've been given a whole we'll put the part and brake on. In the past, I would get impatient, but I realized that this is part of the pl flying experience is following the directions and occasionally have to stop and wait. So not a problem. I do need to figure out Okay. why I ran out of fuel, or maybe I didn't even have any to start with, so I'll have to look into that. Also, it might be a good idea to switch planes and switch back and see if that gets me a new plane. I don't know if it keeps track of where between sessions, but I kind of suspect it does. So it might be good to trade her down and get a different one. KH-417, hold position, caution, other traffic. Uh, hold position, okay. KH-417, continue taxi. Alright. Roger, KH-417. Ah, here we are, right here. Going way too fast all of a sudden, though, for some reason. I don't have the throttle control up high. I don't know why I'm having these issues, but I suspect it's just standard stuff. Nothing unusual. Alright. Parking brake, turn the engines off. I don't know if I can do that from this switch panel. If I go to off, nothing happens. Um, so I still need to learn how to manage that aspect of the plane. Especially with this Logitech panel. 
That's oxygen. I'm trying to see if there's anything where the engine start related stuff is. I guess I really just ought to sit down and read the manual for the plane, but that's not how I typically do things. Eng ignition and engine start. Okay. If I hit this, I am, it's I'm turning the knob, it's not, I'm not seeing it do anything, so maybe it doesn't apply in this case. Anyway, I'll go ahead and turn the engines off. Control shift E on the keyboard should do that. Is this warning? was parking brake. I don't know why. United 1648, hold position, caution, other traffic. And it's not letting me turn the engines off. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Hold position, United 1648. Alright, that's interesting. It wasn't turning them off when I switched my knob to the off position. When I switched it to both all and then I switched, turned the engine off, then it turned them off. So I guess that just tells what engine commands are going to apply, but I still have to use a keyboard command to apply it. Alright, so now I can turn off the plane from my switch panel. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.